Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is Friday. If this is the end of your work week, welcome to the end of your destination. But if it's not, don't worry, you're almost there. This is the Beta Monks Friends. I am the professor, John Gotti. And that guy over there, he says he's going balls deep. It's Doc Leaster. Wow. I'm sorry, Helen. No, no, no. I, he'll he won't do that again. Oh, oh my God! I, I, in in my Helen, defense, Doc said Helen, first. I, he didn't say it on the stream. I, I get. It. I didn't say it on the stream, Helen. I get it. Nope. I didn't but he know he put it out there. He put it out there. Wow. He put it out there. Don't you try to? No, no, Helen. No, no. Yes, yes, I just close your door. Just close the door. He put it out oh, there. My he, he put it out there. Bam, that's that's one on you right there. I can't believe you said that. But we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I guess we're BD at this point. Um, there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> but Doc leaves the here with the Professor John Gotti, the King of RNG, the Troll Master, the Data Analyzing Ninja, the Conqueror of his own fate, the newly formed Terminator. Yes, the cleaner, best podcasting machine, tranquilo, Doc, el idolo, how are you doing? Doing good. Um, <clears throat> wish that I could keep up with Olympic sports with all this. You know, speaking all these of millions of dollars, sports, right? Of these Olympic millions of dollars. Sports, though, <laughs> I mean, shout out to Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart for just dominating. Oh, we're, we're not hearing nothing about that. Oh, my goodness. Right, we're, Again, we're not nothing about I might that. be one of like maybe 50 people in the U.S. actually watching these Olympics. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're not hearing nothing about that. Um, but the future yeah. is bright in the WNBA with these two ladies just doing their thing so much, just so much. And of course, a big shout out to the warrior herself, Diana Tarazi, uh, still playing injured. Uh, she had a risk injury during the, uh, during the last game uh, two days ago, actually, and was able to still uh, persevere and continue forward with it. But, of course, the big news, because of course now everyone truly cares, is the U.S. men's basketball team in the right. gold medal game heading against the defensive juggernaut that is France. Well, the same we'll France see. team that beat them in the FIFA tournament right. and the same France team that gave them their loss during these Olympics. Right. Which I was going to say uh, before, I kind of wish the breakdown was a little better. Like, I, I'm having a hard time understanding how we even got to this point. Like, I know the wins and losses, but it's like, I felt like U.S. They also do lost sports. so many They times. also do, like, point spreads as well, too. No, 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 no. And that part is fine. I feel like the losses of the U.S. team outweighed the wins so it's like they didn't really talk about the wins as much as the losses i guess and maybe oh, yeah. that's on the media that's on the media all they care yeah. about is oh did we win gold oh well who do we blame because we didn't win gold oh we lost oh well let's talk about who lost oh we beat we beat iran by like 30 that's nothing no we don't want to hear about that and that is the retort that i wanted right there because i knew that you would have one um but, yeah, I, I just wish that we would hear more about the wins because from all I know, it's like I feel like the U.S. just lost a whole bunch of games and nope. now somehow we're going for gold. <laughs> you know, like that's what it feels like. But when when France wins, right, or when, you know, Spain wins or one of these other teams win, you hear about it, you know. But when the USA wins, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, they won. I you mean, and, and that's not even talking about, you know, the great standing O. Uh, because, of course, the U.S. beat Spain, speaking of Spain, and it was mm -hmm. Luis Scola's final game mm -hmm. in these Olympics. 
and he got a standing ovation for all the things that he contributed in the 10 years he was playing in the uh, Spain Olympic team. So big shout outs to him. Again, but no one cares, nor no one wants to know about this, but you're going to hear it here at the Beta Monks Friends. <laughs> no, absolutely. And honestly, um, the only reason that I kept up with Spain, obviously, as a Rockets fan, you constantly get reminded of how great Sergio Lull is, um, because obviously his draft rights were with the Rockets for 99 years, and then we finally traded it. But <laughs> now, obviously, we've drafted uh, Garuba, mm -hmm. and, you know, here we are right back in that same kind of boat. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see, you know, if Usman Garuba comes over, the power forward from Spain. Um, but, I mean, Spain's not a bad team. I mean, when you look at it, you got Paul, you, know, you got Rubio, you got Sergio Rodriguez, who's really good. Yeah, you have, you have both you... Gasol brothers, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, I do see Mark right there. So, I, I it's a lot. Uh, even somebody like Alex uh, Abrines, uh, mm -hmm. I think he's – this is a pretty good Willie Hernan Gomez. This is a pretty solid team. Who, so. who was a Nick, and I didn't like the fact that he mm -hmm. got traded. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm. I, he's on the Pelicans now, but this is a really solid team. Uh, yeah, actually, he's not... a free agent. Oh, okay. I said, yeah, I guess this, this still shows him on the Pelicans. Actually, you know what? You're right, because it still shows Mark Gasol on the Lakers, and I don't know if that's actually factual at this point. But... Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, shout out to Scola. Um, you know, again, a rocket, right? Dominated for years. Um, very underrated power forward. Um, wow, we have breaking news. Yep, it is breaking news. As Andre Iguodala wow. resigned and rejoined the Golden State Warriors for a Which, one year deal. I don't think that's. <sighs> I don't think that's as far fetched as we we would be led to believe. Um, obviously, you would go somewhere where you're familiar to try to, you know, we want the old times back. I mean, come on, he was making like eighteen million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he can't have too many hard feelings. You know that that they traded him because again, he was making eighteen million dollars. So, <laughs> so I mean. I'm glad he's back. I'm, I'm hoping that they can return to some kind of relevancy. I don't know if they're they're still trying to sign or trade other people, but Iguodala makes them somewhat competitive. We somewhat. shall see. At, it's it depends totally on Clay. It, it's a totally yeah, it different depends. year. I cannot make oh, that prediction yeah. whatsoever. But the chemistry, the chemistry is there, you know, and, and I think when you have them, them four as a core, obviously they have – Wiggins, uh, they're still trying to figure out how to work Wiseman in, which may or may not have been a great idea, or it, it could have been a bad idea to take a center because they don't really use someone of his caliber in their offense like that. You know, you think about the, the centers that they've had, like they don't really use the centers. They just need somebody that's kind of just there to grab rebounds or to block shots because Steph isn't the greatest defender, right? <laughs> so Which um, is still untrue. I don't well, think, I didn't say I don't he think, wasn't good. Yeah, like well, people act like he's, you know, a complete liability on defense kind of thing. Like so I think he I think when you look at the team, the reason why they would say that he's a liability is because obviously he's usually playing with three or four other guys who play stellar defense. Of course. And he just so happens to be the one to get beat because although he plays good defense, he's not playing stellar, stellar defense. Defense, yeah. So, I mean, he's not – I mean, he obviously he's better than, let's just say, a James Harden, right? But I think with James Harden, I think it's just an effort thing, not so much a skill. It's more will versus skill. I can agree with that. Yeah, but I don't know. That of course is one of those things that we, we have we, to – we talked Monitor. yesterday about Slovenia's defeat to the Frenchman. Right. We talked about now Spain losing to the USA. Gold medal. All eyes will be looking at this 
tomorrow because no one's going to stay up to watch it. They only want to see if we won gold. So we can right. talk about, oh my goodness, how did this rank with the old times for all Olympic teams? Are they better than the Redeem team? Like, wasn't like not even three weeks ago, y'all was talking about USA is in trouble and we should be panicking and all this other stuff because you didn't give any type of props to international basketball? That part, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so, so we just have short-term memory, huh? Big time short-term memory. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so France is going, you know, against the U.S. Um, I'm curious to see how it goes down. I know Evan Fournier had a, a great game last time around. He did. Um, I'm really interested because I've never, you know, obviously there's some guys who just don't have aspirations to play in the NBA. Uh, and I'm looking at uh, Nando Decola, um, yep. who plays for France, the guard, uh, 34 years old. I, I've never really heard of him. But, you know, obviously I don't really watch a lot of international basketball, which I feel like I want to now. And maybe this is why we should be we should be having hopefully more televised international games here in America so that we can actually learn more about the people that we're playing against. Absolutely. Um, but, I mean, of course, NBA TV does tend to play some international basketball, so you just have to catch it when it's on. Um, yeah, I just have to catch it when it's on. But maybe one day um, I'll have to figure out when the season start, and you know, I'll have to find a site to watch it on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be <laughs> do not condone any type. <laughs> of piracy whatsoever. And if you decide <laughs> to do it, do it at your own risk. But if you decide to really, really do it, make sure you get yourself a VPN by either using NordVPN or IP Vanish. But yeah, I'm looking forward to possibly seeing more international games. Of course. Uh, but Which of course, uh, of just to let other people know too, the Bronze medal game is scheduled uh, tonight as well, too, as we have Slovenia going up against Australia. Gotcha. That should be good. But I, I expect Luca to just kind of... It depends. Luca's banged up. Is he? he I he feel is. like he... You I was, know, I, that's I what like I was talking about yesterday. He, 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 was, he was getting... People might have compared this to like what Jordan had to go through with the bad boy Pistons. Like he was getting mm. mauled. Mm. Mm. But I'm I'm interested to see how some of these these players kind of what happens after this. You know, like some people are dominating. Obviously, we see some of the effects of the Olympics. You know, obviously Evan Fournier gets signed. You got Nicholas Batum getting re-signed. So, like, some people who who shined in the Olympics have gotten money. So, I'm interested to see if there's a team that's going to be looking at some of these other international players. Like, I really want to take a look at, let's just say, Mike Toby from Slovenia, right? Mm -hmm. That guy will fit my system. I wonder if he'll come over. You know what I mean? Like I, I like those are some of the things that I, I'm curious about. Um, and if people, you know, own their draft rights, kind of, you know, because you know, some people have draft rights for 99 years. So um, I'm interested to see. But some of them have played in the NBA, but they just they just went home because it just made more sense. Um, but speaking of international players, we talked about them a little bit. Actually, we talked about them a lot this week. And that's Lori Markinen, um, who Future Rocket. Has, fingers crossed, right? Uh, he decided that hey, he doesn't want the Bulls to match his offer. He would like to move on, even though they rebuilt, so to speak. They they retooled. Uh, they've added more of a scoring frenzy of players. Uh, Lloyd Markin says, hey, I want a fresh start. I want out. Uh, maybe he doesn't see how it's shaping up. He doesn't see 
where his role fits in mm-hmm. Chicago with everything that they're doing. I know right now um, the Hornets are interested in acquiring his services. Uh, it doesn't really show any other teams, but me personally, I'm hoping that the Rockets and Raphael Stone take a look. Um, I think I'm surprised Bob us... hasn't reached out to him on Twitter yet. <sighs> You know, I thought about it, but because just... he's been known to do that to that guy who left to go home with his baby girls, but decided no, to go about that guy, really. Well, I didn't mention him by name, but you I know who him. he is. Um, yeah, I know exactly who it is. Um, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. I know that there are some teams that have the money because obviously he's a restricted free agent. Where they could do a sign and trade. The Rockets have some pieces that they would be able to deal. Um, I guess it just depends because now this kind of puts the pressure on the Bulls because you think about it. Yeah. Um, in this situation, do they want to let him go for nothing? Obviously, you'd want to try to negotiate a sign and trade to wherever he wants to go. Um, but right now, the Hornets are interested, which him and a young ball. Um, I think they could be that could be a nice addition. Uh, they lost, they've definitely lost some pieces. So, um, but I would be interested to see who these other teams are. Um, and I hope that the Rockets are one of them. It'd be hilarious <laughs> if uh, the Heat managed to get him. Oh God! Or uh, or Milwaukee. I mean, but they still got to sign Giannis's brother. That guy got a championship, man. He can retire today. He can retire today and just join the coaching staff because at this point, that's what his role was. <laughs> he helped Giannis overcome his free throw woes. That, that was what his role was. Um, I don't, I don't think they used him effectively because that's the case. They might as well bring in the other brother too. They might as well just have all three brothers on on the team. Uh, that but actually would be hilarious, but I get what you're saying. It it would be, uh, but yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't think uh, I don't think he's as important as the media would make it seem. But we learned yesterday, mm-hmm. Johnny. That football is back. Um, <laughs> not for me. Yes. Yeah, not for me because football never ends for me. Um, I do football all year, but for the world, everybody got a chance to say that football is back. Getting high. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but we got a chance to see the Steelers and the and them boys, the Cowboys, play. Obviously, we got a chance to see rookie running back Najee Harris. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we got a chance to see some of the young quarterbacks. We got a chance to see some of the young players. Obviously, Micah Parsons. You know, we got to see freaking young quarterbacks pretty much. Like, who's going to be the second, you know, second string? You know, who's going to take over possibly for Big Ben? You yeah. know, obviously, you have Mason Rudolph. You have Dwayne Haskins. Um, but, I didn't get a chance to watch the game. It seemed pretty interesting, a, a low-scoring game until the second half. Um, any takeaways from the game that you noticed? I mean, I like the fact that the Steelers' secondary was pretty hungry. Um, they managed to get a few turnovers. It was, they pro- they probably could have gotten, and I want to say as a whole, there were, what, I don't even remember how many turnovers but the, the whole game, but there should have been more turnovers uh, mm-hmm. by the Cowboys in this game. So they should be very, 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 very lucky that they only do one pick. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. But, you, but and of the, course, but of, course that, of course, that pick came from the homeboy, Ben Dinucci. But I definitely want to give props to the Steelers secondary, though. They were all over the place last night. Um, definitely did a great job of neutralizing the Cowboys rushing offense as well, too. But of course, 
it's preseason. <laughs> Of but course. they have potential if they yeah. try to carry that over into the regular season. But, of course, we won't know anything until preseason week four. Right. And uh, we did hear that uh, Kalen Bellage did uh, suffer an injury. I didn't get the details on that, but I know he, uh, Coach Tomlin did say he suffered an injury. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, I don't know how much, but. I know there were a lot of reports about Clace, Clace, Chase Claypool. Yes. <laughs> uh, I just like mixed his first and last name together there. Uh, unless I just call him Clace Poo. Uh, but Clayson. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it seemed that he had a, himself a nice game. Obviously, last season, he was a focal point. Mm -hmm. um, of the offense. I'm surprised that he even played so much. I don't know. It, they make it seem like he played like a lot of the game, but three catches, 62 yards. Um, he played pretty, pretty good, you know, and again, Mason Rudolph, Dwayne Haskins, and Joshua Dobbs were the quarterbacks, no big Ben. They usually don't play till the third, fourth game, just like nope. kind of knock the rust off. But I'm happy to see that Najee Harris and Jalen Samuels kind of got some of those first couple of carries. Um, and I think it should be – the Steelers should be okay. Um, you know, I mean, I don't see – I don't see a lot of things that jump out. But, again, as you mentioned, this is crazy. That's all I got. <laughs> um, but – I don't know. I'm happy that football's back. I mean, I, and it must be an it must have been crazy if one of the major highlights was a coffin punt, right? <laughs> uh, that was a major highlight, a, a punt that landed at the one yard line. Hey, people drastically underestimate how important punting is in football. Oh, big time! <laughs> I whole, listen, I spent the whole practice. Uh, working on who can punt, so I, I definitely understand. Even though I don't want to punt, it's important. So we got to practice it. Absolutely. But, but I know people heard our show on their favorite podcast platform. But if you didn't, you can always go to our website at www dot debate amongst friends dot com to not only hear this episode but all of the previous be sure to tune in monday through friday at 4 p.m eastern standard time as we'll always deliver the news our analysis and you know it those three and if you don't believe that just ask the queen herself charlotte claire fox favorite wrestler.